Hello everyone, good evening. We are here showing you one of uh, two, two patterns that are in the spur strap tooling pattern pack, but uh, this is the fastest tooling pattern uh, that I offer in a spur strap, which it's also in a dovetail spur strap, which is probably the simplest construction. So if you're looking for, you know, maybe first time building spur straps, this is a great, uh, great pattern for construction wise. We're gonna roll right on getting these cuts going. And this is, uh, this is my Leather Wrangler's knife that I'm using this evening. And it's a 3 8 barrel with a quarter inch blade. I kind of really like this knife. I use the same size of knife and a Barry King knife, uh, and I like that one as well. We're gonna continue rolling right on. I'll show you kind of some neat stuff to do in this stump for some decorative cuts at the end there. I can stand that out a little bit. And this flower that's in here is really a pretty traditional Sheridan style flower. So I'll show you how I how I tool those. Um, give you a little bit of a perspective on that. And we're just gonna rock right through this pattern tonight. Now this particular pattern doesn't go all the way out there. Um, one, what I like doing on there is kind of like how I have it drawn in on the pattern with that border. So I'm gonna come in with a set of dividers and we'll actually, I'm gonna open those up a little bit though. There we go. We're gonna come in and mark a border right on there with my dividers. It's the best way to get a good, solid, even border on there rather than trying to transfer from your pattern with a stylus and maybe getting off there. This way you know it's true to your, to your edge there. Then I'm gonna continue that border through right here and pick up a couple extra background spaces. There you have it. It kind of helps tie that in together. So we'll come along and cut that border in now before we get over to our bevels. Hello, hello. Appreciate you guys jumping on here. Taking your time to join me here this evening. I love seeing more and more of you guys being able to catch me on here live as we're working through this series of tooling through every single one of the patterns that I offer. So we have a little tutorial on them. I've been kind of going back and forth between book patterns and pattern pack patterns just to switch it up a little bit so we don't get stuck in a rut as we work through there. But pretty soon we're going to have to start working through one of the specialty patterns, I think. I think those will be, those will take a, a little bit longer to go through there's a lot more to those specialty patterns um, and so i'm going to break those up into probably two to three videos per pattern but i have the three patterns i want to work through there are going to be the bucking horse the chief and the barrel racer and i'm gonna let you guys kind of decide which one we start with first so um, let me know, shoot, drop some comments as far as which one you'd like to see first, and we'll uh, add that next up on the list to do. Might not be the next, next one, but the first specialty pattern that we work through. So now this bevel that I'm using, this is a XX Steep Berry King checkered bevel. Um, Sizing, I'm not sure on the size. I have to correct myself. I had said that I thought this was a size zero in a couple uh, comments to a couple people, 
but this apparently is not the size zero. Um, one of the one of you guys following along here had sent me a message showing me a picture of their size zero that they just ordered, and it was way smaller than this. So um, just know that this is not a size zero. It's probably a probably a one, maybe even a two, but. Um, but I'm not positive on that because they're not marked on the tool, so hard to say. But I will try to get that cleared up. As soon as I have a clear answer for sure, I will let you guys know. But if I had told you a size zero in the last few days, I am wrong. And I am not afraid to admit that, but I just don't want you to get mixed up on that. So, all right, bucking horse, bucking horse. I see, uh, see some boats coming in on there. These lines that are ending in that vine work, I really want to fade those out as we go here too. You see how that helps add some depth in there where that one line that's still in your vine work is faded out and that outside one is, is beveled down all the way. Pat, you want to see the barrel racer at some point? Perfect. Yeah, we'll, uh, I'll definitely be working through those, so we'll not disappoint there. We're going to, we're going to get through all of the patterns. Um, eventually we want to, want to come out with, uh, with another book actually, but I wanted to make sure to get somewhat, uh, of some tutorials or some, some tooling videos on all the ones that I have offered first. Um, just want to add that as a resource, I think, where where these aren't how-to books or pattern packs. They're, they're just the line art or the book has the, um, has the pictures of, of the bevel lines and then pictures of the finished tooling. But I think sometimes it can help to see, see something and watch it tooled through there. Now with the awesome resource of Facebook and YouTube that we have, why not put it to use, right? So that's why I just thought that'd be a neat, a neat resource to add with all the pattern stuff is have a video of it being tooled um, with just a couple tips and tricks along the way in there. So hopefully you guys are finding value in that as well, uh, in which case I will continue to do with anything that we release we'll make sure to have videos on it as well all right we're getting getting our way through our through our pattern here and this is another little trick if you're more on the, the beginner side and not real sure well, which side of the level uh, or which side of the line do I bevel on and not really seeing that. We'll cover this and, and other stuff um, a lot more in depth like the, the different courses and things. But if you look at that dominant stem that's coming out here, this is the main stem that flowers grown out of. That's standing on top, so my beveling is layering everything. So from there, I'm going to bevel out, going that way. Coming in, I will bevel out, coming in. So that main stem stands on top, and everything else pushes down away from there. So all you're doing with your beveling is really layering all the pieces of your pattern. Sometimes it can get a little, little confusing if you're looking at stuff. Just really take a minute to sit back, look at the big picture. Okay, what's this supposed to look like and what is it that I'm looking at? Uh, and is this supposed to sit on top or underneath the next piece? <clears throat> All 
All right, John, Sean, you guys say you learned so much from here. That's awesome. I appreciate that. I, uh, I, I love hearing that. I'm, I'm glad you guys are gaining from this. I like to, like to know we're ha making an impact with it. So I'm going to come right now real quick, and I'm just going to bevel along this border so that's beveled in. Gives you an idea on a, a longer straight line too. I'll move right along there, but I'm still hitting that, that tool and not moving it very far in between hits. And that's why I'm able to achieve that smooth bevel line. That can be one of the bigger challenges when you're Getting started is getting those smooth bevel lines. But working right through, getting that rhythm and that tempo, it's going to help me hit consistently as far as the pressure down that I'm putting on that tool. But lets me walk right along there and get a nice smooth line. Another big long line here we're going to work through. I get kind of as far as I can and then I reposition those base fingers and then I can work along there again. So I work down, reposition, and keep working down. Uh, hello, hello, appreciate you guys jumping on here. Let's see. Now just the end of this line, and we're gonna switch gears and start putting a little shading in here. And I'm gonna go over to my vertical line thumbprint here. And it looks like my moisture's still doing good. I still have plenty of moisture in there, and I'm still getting a nice burnish as you've seen when we were beveling there. So I'm gonna roll right on with this. Now, when I run that thumbprint, I tip that up a little bit so I'm softening that back edge of those lines. I try not to put that full tool impression in there. <laughs> Dina, you're gaining the urge to try. Awesome. Well... And give it a try we'll, uh, it's I promise it's not as easy as it looks it's <laughs> so don't let me mislead you there by any means but it's not complicated it's <laughs> it's extremely simple it's just not easy so it takes lots of hours and in practice for sure but super super fun thing to pick up if you're looking for a hobby and it's also uh, can be a, a profitable business if you're willing to work at it and and want to put in the work there too so lots of lots of options with it but uh, yeah it's it's definitely can be a little harder than than what it looks uh, but the ideas and the principles behind it are not extremely complicated. Uh, just takes some time to master. Comes with patience. Yeah, it, uh, it'll at least test your patience from time to time for sure. <laughs> You know, it's funny, you gotta, anytime I think about patience, I think, 
think about praying and asking for patience. Like, God, just help me. Give me some patience. Well, you got to be careful you pray for because he doesn't necessarily give you patience. He just gives you an opportunity to practice patience. So... Now with that little stump there, you're seeing, I tip, I'm tipping this tool back that way to soften that back edge and kind of run that down there like a bevel. But I'm also tipped back towards the camera here a little bit. So I'm softening that, this back edge over here as well. And just running that hard edge right down along that ridge there causing that little highlight out at, the, out at the edge there. And then when I come in here, I'm leaving that middle and creating that ridge. You can kind of see in the middle of there. Also creating one right here on this side too. And we're gonna come back, do some decorative cut work uh, and make that look really cool here in just a second. But I wanna slow down and show you what that was that I did there. Okay, this one here, I'm just gonna come. Now this is where that pedal's actually flipped up over there. I'm gonna come and just put a little bit of, a little bit of shading texture right there at that fold. All right, next I'm gonna come in with this, uh, this ground down tool. If you've been following along watching the series, all oh, you've seen me use this tool before. It's just some old tool I got at a yard sale and then ground it down to make this little tiny kind of a lifter and stop tool here back when I first really started. Um, and I love this tool. I've kept, kept on it and used it all the time. Use it on just about every project I do. And it really helps highlight those little little ridges in there and there was a learning curve to that one too you know you punch through leather and hit it down too hard go through to your marble then try to scooping up too much and tearing through leather like that was that was kind of a bugger to get figured out but man once i do i sure do love that tool Okay, now this is, a, this is a little round face checkered bevel that I use kind of in place of a lifter. And in this pattern, I'm gonna come right in here. Now watch what this does on the edge of that stump there. Everything, you know, looks pretty good, but we're gonna add a lot of dimension right here. See how that lifts that up and helps really highlight that point there. Now where this fold over is, where that rolls over, I'm gonna come in. Really give a little extra depth to that as well. Okay, and I have a little cedar that I'm gonna come in to help stand off the stem there, that dominant stem then. And then come in behind that with what's called a little mule's foot. I like the single mule's foot. They have some that are put in there, um, that a tool that's like three or four of these mule's feet together, it's all in one when you hit it down. I like the single one because I like to be able to roll that around there as I bait it down. Next, I'm going to come in here with a, a vayner and really tip that so I'm just getting the edge of that tool rather than the full impression. And fade that down there. Just help to, again, stand that stem off, bring a little 
dimension in there, round that out a little bit. And we're getting down there. I got a bigger flower center I'm gonna put in here. I like this big flower center. And don't always get to use it in the belts and stuff because it's it can be a little big depending on your flower, but I really do like it. I'm gonna come in with similar to my vertical line thumbprint. This is a little center liner. Come in the those petals and You can kind of hear that difference as I work through that petal and you can see where it's getting darker right in there towards the center. Help creating a little extra depth in that, in those petals there. Now I'll come back with my bevel again. Touch off those edge of those petals and make sure to bring them right down to my center. Uh, now Drayton, I think you're asking why do I not use my thumbprint right in here? Um, if that's what you're asking, you can use the, uh, the thumbprint in there in place of this. This one is just specifically designed to fit around that center. You can see that concave edge on that end of it. So it just fits right around there a lot easier. But before I got that tool, I did it with my, uh, with my thumbprint, which you can still work your way around there. It just doesn't have that nice concave edge or concave into it. So definitely doable. I'm going to come back, line up my seeds there, and then just sharpen that center off. Just touch again. Um, yeah, down that bevel that I used is the XX steep. So it's the steepest bevel that Barry King does have there. Okay, we're gonna come in with my bar grounder and we're gonna do some backgrounds here. I just got a few background spaces in this pattern and then we're gonna to get to the decorative cuts. Um, if you've been following along, you know that's my favorite spot is getting, it's doing those decorative cuts. It's the final touch that really gives that extra flow to the pattern. But get these decorate or the backgrounds done before we do that really want to try to not run that bar grounder up and hitting your vines you can see that little nick i hit right there it happens see sometimes you just you make mistakes and it's not the end of the world i'm going to come back with my bevel here and i'm just gonna touch up right along clean that up okay no harm no foul clean it up um try not to do that but Maybe it uh, shows that a guy really should put those glasses on instead of just leave them sit there. I think that's one of the things about leather work is part of being Getting good at leather work isn't necessarily that you get super good, it's you get really good at covering up mistakes and making them look on purpose. And really that's, 
I encourage you as you're learning, if you make a mistake on something, don't just get frustrated and throw it away. Figure out how to camouflage that. Make it uh, make it look like you meant, meant it to be that way. And the more you do that, the more you make less of those mistakes. But if you make a mistake and then just get mad, and throw it away, start over, like, yeah, I, I can understand that perfection thought process behind that. But if you learn to work with it, go with the flow, continue to move on, you'll start, uh, <laughs> you'll start to make less of those. <laughs> yeah, Drayton, you said two nights in a row with the cover up. That, uh, that's the, that's the good thing about me doing these videos later. You guys get to see, see when the, when the batteries are running low in my hands here, you're going to see all the mistakes we get to do. So yeah, that's called art, Corey. <laughs> you bet. Okay, now some decorative cuts. These are going to be, like I said, kind of the fun part. We get to help. I'm going to pull one right down in the middle of those mules' feet there. I'll bring a little flow in here to these patterns. Here, one big one there. Come on the inside. I'm just going to stack a few of these right down here. Just fade a few really light down that outside edge. Kind of takes a big old stump and stands that up, makes it look kind of cool, I think. Now we'll get in to the flower itself. This is where you can really bring a lot of dimension and flow to a petal that normally, you know, that just looks like it's sitting there, right? By playing with these cuts and running them different directions, as long as we're pulling back towards the center here, really start getting a lot more action in there. Those cuts, we're wanting to pull them down close and draw them near each other, but not actually cross and touch. That's kind of fun get those cuts in there really makes a difference in those flowers don't you think like just running some cuts in there stands that up and just brings that to life now out here this would be out where you could run any kind of geometric pattern um, like a basket stamp or a cross hatch or anything cool like that um, I think you know what we'll uh Let's just free in. We're going to do some little cuts in here. We're going to decorative cut this space and then call it good. Um, so this isn't planned out at all. So we'll just, we'll just figure this out as we go here. Just because we're not going to basket stamp this tonight. Got that 
the base figured out. Now we can kind of fill in with some This just shows to you, once you set your base in there, we can, you can build off of that. And as long as you got that right base in there, you're gonna have your, your flow already established. And you have you in the drawing course kind of recognize some of those some of those cuts and lines that we're doing there it's, it's a lot of that same core patterns that we build on to draw Okay, there we have it. That is the fastest tooling spur strap pattern Oops, that I offer. And that is one of two patterns that's in the uh, spur strap pattern pack for the uh, dovetail spur straps. So any questions, be sure and shoot those at me. Uh, love to answer those and help you out uh, as much as we can there but i uh, appreciate you guys taking your time to watch here and be on with me we will continue this series working through all the patterns that i offer in both the book and the pattern packs um, again even the specialty patterns we will probably break those into two to three videos per pattern but we'll get through all of those as well. So you guys have a great evening and we will catch you on here next time.